Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to go through my favorite 60 books that I've read this year. Actually that's pretty much everything I read this year. I have not rank ordered them because they're all fascinating in different ways. You can view the total list in the description below. Uh, my internal dialogue in deciding to put out a video like this is that the world needs more people to spread a message about a passion for learning. Uh, I love to learn. I'm obsessed with it. I'm always uh, going from one thing to another and just trying to absorb as much as I can. It really enriches my life reading because there are so many interesting people out there putting a lot of thought and a lot of effort into books. Um, more so than any other medium, I would, I would say. Um, a big part of my demographic is 18 to 24 year old men, so guitar players who follow me. And I feel like I could have had an easier transition to adult adulthood if I had a, began to read earlier. Somebody I respected told me that you never find the answers in books, so don't bother. And that was really, really horrible advice. So. Two principles come to mind here. One is never trust a philosopher who isn't an athlete, which is probably my favorite saying. And this person who said that did not have the life that I wanted to have, yet I listened to them and that was my mistake. Um, it takes a lot of effort to sit down and read a book and convince yourself that that is a good way to spend your time. Maybe this video is just a way for me to say it really, really has improved my life a lot reading. So I think it's it's worth spending your time doing. Okay, the top 60 books. Number one is Sapiens by Yuval Harari. I'm not sure if the focus is right on that. The camera looks like out of focus. This is an amazing, amazing book. It's kind of like the modern day Guns, Germs and Steel, which is another great book I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Um, it's really about human evolution um, from a really big picture view. Yuval is a really, really interesting guy. He's a historian uh, from Israel, I believe. So that was an amazing book. I flew through that in like five days or so. Next, The Organized Mind by Daniel Levitin. Daniel is a, is a friend of mine and he's an amazing, amazing person. Just look up his Wikipedia page to see all the things he's done. He's a, a cognitive neuroscientist and a musician, producer, recording engineer. He's worked with Steely Dan and Santana and the Grateful Dead and all these people. And um, he went into the academic world and is a professor. He's been a professor at McGill University and um, he has a textbook that was like an MIT psychology textbook. So very, very smart and interesting person. The research is finding that people who read literary fiction as opposed to popular fiction or non-fiction were better, better able to detect another person's emotions and the theory proposed that literary fiction engages the reader in a process of decoding the character's thoughts and motives in a way that popular fiction and non-fiction being less complex do not. We'll get into the literary fiction in a moment, but this is a great book. All of Daniel's books are amazing. He wrote This Is Your Brain on Music, another excellent book. Next up we have Chinaberry Sidewalks by Rodney Crowell. This is an absolutely hilarious read. The audiobook version is even cooler, I think, because it's Rodney's actual voice reading it. And uh, I'm sure you, a lot of you know about Rodney and his songs. He's one of the best songwriters in, in Nashville and in music, and uh, I've been playing guitar with him for a few years now. And he's a great guy, a really, really heartfelt, interesting person. And this book is a memoir about his childhood. It's not about his musical career. It's about growing up in Texas. It was a hard scrabble environment. And he really is a, is a masterful, masterful storyteller. So check that out. China Berry Sidewalks by Rodney Crowell. Next, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. This is a, a kind of a classic from my understanding. I see a lot of uh, interesting academic folks referenced in this book. Daniel Kahneman was the winner of the Nobel Prize in Economics. It's very, very deep. Whenever you are conscious, and perhaps even when you are not, multiple computations are going on in your brain which maintain and update current answers to some key questions. Is anything new going on? Is there a threat? Are things doing well? Should my attention be redirected? Is more effort needed for this task? You can think of a cockpit with a set of dials that indicate the current values of each and their essential valuables. 
Because as you can see, I highlight, I highlight a lot. I really love to reread books. Yeah, it's about two systems of thinking. System one is your old brain, and system two is your new brain. And it's a very, very interesting way of viewing the world. If there's one cognitive bias I suffer from, it's black and white thinking. Well, there's many of them, of course, but black and white thinking is something I do a lot. I love to view the world through this yin-yang, good or bad or nothing kind of way. And um, Daniel kind of uh, brings in the perspective of the old brain and the new brain, system one, system two. It's a very, 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 very interesting book. I really love it. In fact, I'm, I'm gifting that to my brother for Christmas. Next up, we have Guns, Germs, and Steel. My dad sent me this book for my birthday. It's really, really a great, great book. I hadn't read it before. It was released in the 90s, I believe. And uh, 3 million copies sold. Bill Gates says it's really great. It's a book about human evolution and how the different types of folks evolved in different parts of the world and um, why the conditions in the Fertile Crescent were perfect for developing the first human civilization. It's a really, really interesting, great book. Next up we have The Black Swan by Nassim Taleb. Nassim Taleb is a very, very interesting guy. He's a professor at NYU, I believe, and this book is about uh, kind of similar to Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And it's a book about black swans, so highly improbable things that happen that really change the landscape in whatever domain they do. As you can see, I've highlighted a lot of this book. It's really, really, really great. He's uh, Lebanese, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, great book. Next up, we have Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Talk about literary fiction. This is an absolutely horrifying book. It's terrifying. Um, I, I remember I was reading a bunch of Dostoevsky on the Outlaw Country Cruise this year. So I'm on a cruise ship down in New Mexico went from New Orleans to Mexico, the cruise did, and I'm on this ship, and I remember just sitting in my little hole reading Dostoevsky, and it's a terrifying thing to do. Everyone upstairs is getting drunk and gambling and listening to all this crazy country music. But it's about this guy, Raskolnikov, and he accidentally, well, he did not, he, he kills this woman, and then he just basically goes crazy and destroys him, and it's really horrifying but incredible and very very insightful. Nietzsche said um, Dostoevsky taught him a lot about psychology. Continuing we have Ray Dalio Principles. This is a really great book. Ray Dalio created the uh, world's biggest hedge fund Bridgewater and this is basically a book about his principles uh, such as think for yourself He's all about radical transparency and, um, and being really, really honest and creating an environment where people you trust who have believability, as he says, which means, means they've, um, they kind of know what they're talking about, um, creating an environment where they can tell you the truth, the cold, hard truth. Um, it's a lot about decision making and um, he's really, really a remarkable, remarkable person and, um, and this is a remarkable book, Ray Dalio Principles. This book is freaking amazing. The Story of Philosophy. This was written like in the 20s or 30s and apparently it popularized philosophy. It's basically an overview of the story of Western philosophy. It doesn't really go into the Eastern stuff very much, but um, he goes through all the different thinkers from, from Plato and Aristotle to Francis Bacon and Spinoza and the Voltaire and the French Enlightenment, Schopenhauer. I have a song about Schopenhauer I've written. It's pretty cool. Herbert Spencer, Nietzsche, um, into the more modern people at the time of the writing, such as Dewey and Russell and all these different people. It's very, very well written. It's a fascinating journey. It makes me kind of wish I was born Wish I was around back in the well, not really. I mean, there was wars and stuff going on, but I like the way Will thinks. Brilliant, brilliant writer, thinker, interesting guy. Next, we have Leonardo da Vinci, biography by Walter Isaacson. Really, really well done. Walter Isaacson is a great writer. He wrote the famous biography on Steve Jobs, also the one on Einstein. Probably my favorite one by him overall is the Benjamin Franklin biography that I read. 
um, maybe a couple years ago now, but this is a really great portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. And as you know, a fascinating, brilliant, brilliant guy. And um, what a beautiful insight into such a creative person's mind. Speaking of mind, now we have The Coddling of the American Mind by Jonathan Haidt. Jonathan Haidt is a psychology professor at NYU, I think. This book talks about kind of this culture of safe spaces where people feel like they need to hide from all the bad things rather than confronting them. It's about really the current environment of the generation of kids younger than me. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I like Jonathan Haidt a lot. He's a very interesting guy. Daniel Levitin. This is his classic book, This Is Your Brain on Music. Really, really great book. Every musician should check that out. Uh, he really goes through why the brain loves music. Why we evolved to love music. Why it's such a huge part of every culture on Earth. And why we're obsessed with it. The science of a human obsession. Jordan Peterson, Maps of Meaning. This is a really complicated book. I have the audiobook as well. Um, Jordan Peterson is now famous for um, being kind of a free thinker. And a, he's a controversial guy in many ways. I really think he's fascinating. And I really like him. And I even he heard him speak in Nashville with a friend of mine. And um, it was really a cool experience to be there with a lot of people who just wanted to hear him talk about Truth. Maps of Meaning is a really great book. He wrote it when he was a professor at Harvard. And it goes through kind of the relationship between mythology, religion, psychology, philosophy. It's really an interdisciplinary kind of uh, approach. And it's it's really it's a pretty intense book. It's it's quite difficult to read, but I'm still still thinking about it to be honest, trying to get my head around it. Jordan Peterson, Twelve Rules for Life. This was his uh, the book he released this year, and it's really great. I mean, it's a little more user friendly than than his textbook. Um, some of the rules are: don't lie, <laughs> always tell the truth, always be honest. Treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Uh, one of the cool things about psychology is you don't just start to understand yourself, but you start to understand other people better. And that really improves your relationships and your perspective, um, your self-awareness. And uh, I, I really have learned a lot from listening to Jordan's lectures and paying attention to him. Next up, we have the Gulag Archipelago. This is a really uh, harrowing, harrowing book about Alexander Solzhenitsyn's experience in the gulags during Soviet Russia. It's a really, really important book as well to understand. Um, it wasn't that all that long ago that some really, I mean, indescribably heinous things happened in that part of the world. Um, I was over in the Czech Republic feels like it was this year but it was last year and I I was talking with with a friend of mine over there and we we're talking about Stalin and his influence in the Czech Republic and it was really really heavy to hear about it and uh, reading this book kind of ch changes your view on on a lot of things. Great book. We got some Jung now. I really love Jung. He's a very, very fascinating guy. Modern Man in Search of a Soul. These three books, um, The Gulag Archipelago, Jung, and the next book, which is a Dostoevsky book, um, were all from Jordan Peterson's reading list. So there's a lot of really great books on there. I haven't, I haven't got to most of them, actually. So, Jung, very, very fascinating guy. I started reading about dreams and getting into the kind of psychoanalytic thinkers and 
now I have these little index cards next to my bed and I wake up in the middle of the night. I dream, like I have three different dreams a night. Very, very interesting to learn about your dreams and analyze your dreams and think about where they come from. So, I like you on a lot. Dost F C Notes from Underground. This is the book I read when I was on the cruise ship. Um, yeah, it's just, it's like being in the mind of an insane person. It's very, very, very interesting. Next up, we have Ray Dalio's Big Debt Crises. This book just came out, and I haven't like got through it all. It's three volumes, as you can see. But I read I read a lot of the PDF version he released, and I've um, I've been through this quite a bit. Ray Dalio is just he's like just the coolest guy. Next, Daniel Levitin, The World in Six Songs. This is maybe my favorite book that Daniel's written. Um, it, I think if you're a songwriter, reading this book is very, very valuable because it breaks down it breaks down why we love certain types of songs, uh, from love songs, religious songs, knowledge songs, joyful songs, comfort songs, friendship songs. You know, it's a... Uh, it's very interesting to think as a songwriter what what emotions and and you know why we like the songs we like. We've been adapted to like music. We've been adapted to be attracted to certain types of of, um, of songs. And Daniel does a really great job explaining it in this book. Next up, we have some Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is um, really cool guy. I have two books by Tony Robbins that I that I read in sequence. I went through like you know, a week and a half of Tony Robbins. Money Master the Game. A really close friend of mine recommended me this book. He's a, a great musician and um, and he said, hey man, if you're not thinking about like investing for retirement and all that stuff, reading this book is a great way to learn about those things and of course I want to learn about everything. These books are really, really genuine. I believe he's coming from a genuine place and um, talks about how to avoid kind of common pitfalls in the uh, investing world and how to basically not be a broke musician. Paul Charlie's Almanac by Charles Munger. Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger is uh, Warren Buffett's business partner. He's a billionaire guy and uh, Bill Gates called him the most interesting thinker he's ever met. He's a very, very interesting guy. This is a great, great book. It's expensive. It's like, I think it's like 60 bucks or something. I, I bought it a long while ago and uh, it was recommended by someone that I really liked. Maybe those guys on the Investing Podcast or something. And it's really full of great quotes, great insights into how Charlie thinks. Charlie is a, um, it's kind of famous for talking about the cognitive biases, 25 cognitive biases and how they affect decision making, not only investing but in, uh, in everyday life. So I really enjoyed this book. Jonathan Haidt, The Righteous Mind. This book really gives you an appreciation for different people's political views. And I think that's really important in this current time because we're, you know, we're so polarized. The media is just this kind of sensationalized machine that's just making everybody angry at each other. And it's, um, it's quite interesting to, to realize conservatives tend to be more conscientious and liberal folks tend to be more creative. Um, liberal meaning the American way of saying it because in Australia the liberals are the right wing party anyway. I'm not going to get into politics. You don't want to hear that from me. But this is a very interesting book on the psychology behind people's beliefs. Next up we have Jocko Willink's book, Extreme Ownership. My sister's getting this for Christmas. This is for you, Claire. Uh, Jocko Willink is my favorite guy for many reasons. One reason is he wakes up at 4 a.m., which is my favorite time to wake up. He is a retired Navy SEAL and got out of the military. He started uh, kind of consulting different businesses and he really has great, great leadership principles. And um, this is a book about really owning it, owning every decision you make, being a good leader, being a strong individual that people want to follow. Um, 
lots of great reviews. Sold a lot of copies, more than a million copies sold. Jocko Willink, he has a great podcast too. Steven Pinker, The Better Angels of Our Nature. This book is great, but it's really, really long. I, I don't think it needs to be, you know, six, seven hundred pages. This book is basically about how violence has declined in our world and how, you know, in the days of Solzhenitsyn and, and in the days of the world, the world wars last century, it was a very, very different environment. And if you go back further and further, it, you know, it, we had a, a past that is a lot more violent than today. And this book talks about why we should be grateful for the world we live in and not just complaining all the time. Homo Deus. Deus. Homo Deus. Uh, another book by Yuval Harari. It's really an extension of his book Sapiens, which kind of stops at the modern human, and this talks about how we're going to merge with AI and what that's going to do to us. Um, you know, it's kind of got a bit of a futurist bent to it. Um, I really like the way Yuval writes. This book doesn't feel as good as Sapiens to me. Um, and I've been reading 21 Rules for the 21st Century as an audiobook, and I'm really enjoying that. I think that's a really good book. Maybe better than Homo, Homo Deus for, for me. The Art of Memoir by Mary Carr. Rodney Crowell talks about Mary Carr a lot, and um, she's a kind of legendary memoirist. She wrote, what's the famous book she wrote that I haven't read yet? The Liars Club. And this is a book where she talks about how to write memoir. I'm going to write a memoir. I'm going to write a book next year. I'm going to start it at least um, about the way I came up, not necessarily as a musician, but, well, stay tuned. You'll see where my book goes. So this, this is a really great book for anyone who's interested in writing. Richard Branson, Finding My Virginity. This is really a great book. Richard is a very interesting guy, very passionate, fascinating, exciting person who started many, many businesses. And um, he's a very creative, kind of a right brain kind of guy. He strikes you as the kind of guy that turns up to work, you know, and he's flip flops and just says, hey, let's try this, let's start this kind of company, let's do this. Interesting guy, and this is a this is a good book. I think this is better. I have a couple other books on him, and this one I think is the best. Finding My Virginity. I bought this at the airport in England. And I read it when I was over in England. Made me feel English. Made me feel like I was resonating with the environment. Lee Kuan Yew, very interesting guy. He was the president of Singapore and he's one of the most respected political leaders in the world. Um, kind of turned Singapore from being um, a country with a lot of problems to being one of the, the uh, financial hubs in Asia. Uh, very, very insightful guy. Charlie Munger says he's, he's, um, Lee Kuan used his favorite person. University of Berkshire Hathaway. This is a, a great book of kind of, uh, a recap of every shareholders meeting since the eighties. <laughs> they have their annual shareholders meeting. Now there's like 30,000 people that go to it. They do it in like an arena, I guess. Um, and that book's just interesting insights into Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett and how they think and make investment decisions. 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. This is an interesting book with a lot of useful ideas for people, well, for any, anybody really. It talks about basically how to not be a pushover. Jack Welch winning, talk about not being a pushover. Jack Welch was the uh, GE CEO, manager of the century by Fortune magazine. Jack is a pretty interesting guy, very old school cat. Joseph Campbell, the hero with a thousand faces. Joseph Campbell inspired George Lucas uh, to create Star Wars. His characters were based around Joseph's ideas about um, kind of the, the hero archetype. Evolutionary Psychology by David Buss. David Buss is one of the preeminent evolutionary psychologists and it explains a lot about why we think the way we think and where that comes from. It comes from millions of years of evolution. 
It's a great textbook. Speaking of textbooks, Foundations of Cognitive Psychology by Daniel Levitin. I haven't read all this. This is an intense book. It's like a collection of all these different ideas. Stephen Hawking, A Brief History of Time. When Stephen Hawking died, I started reading all his books. And um, yeah, he was a fascinating guy. Origins of the Sphinx by Robert Schock. Robert Schock is a very interesting guy. His theory is um, hitting the guitar. I have a guitar here, by the way. In case you forget what I do. Robert Schock is an interesting guy. I first heard about him on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he his theory is the Sphinx is way older than we think it is. 1984 by George Orwell. I read that book and then watched all the different movies on 1984. It's a classic, of course. The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. I did that too. I read the book and then watched the movie. Uh, I, I like Ayn Rand. I know a lot of people don't like her and I know that she's not real literary fiction because she kind of just uh, has these characters that are um, kind of one-dimensional, but I enjoyed it. Living with a Seal by Jesse Itzler. This is a great book about David Goggins, who is someone I'm really fascinated with, and he lives in Nashville, apparently. So I'd love to meet you sometime, David. Maybe that'll happen one day. He's the, David's the fittest guy in the world. He can do like a, th a thousand push-ups. He has the world record for that, and he's run, he ran like, I think it was seven 100-mile races in seven weeks or some, something crazy like that. Anyway, Jesse Hitzler is the guy that started Zico Coconut Water and he's kind of an entrepreneurial guy. And he had um, David Goggins come and live with him and train him and make him jump in a pool of ice and all this crazy stuff. This book is Living with the Monks. It's about Jesse Hitzler's experience going to live with a bunch of monks. It's, it's interesting as well, but Living with the Seal is my favorite of those two. Lolita by Nabokov. This is a pretty perverted book. I wouldn't recommend that for younger readers. It's kind of, it's very perverted. But Nabokov is a brilliant writer. Hemingway, Old Man in the Sea, classic of course. Anna Karenina, well, Tol Tolstoy, a classic of course. The Plant Paradox by Dr. Gundry. Uh, quite an interesting book. He makes a compelling case that the lectins in food are a major, major problem. And uh, it's worth checking out Dr. Gundry. Check him out on YouTube. Speaking of health, Heal Yourself by Walter Lask. He is a uh, German toxicologist from New Zealand. And uh, this book was written in, in the 70s. This book's apparently worth like five, six hundred bucks on Amazon because it's out of print. Um, my great aunt gave me this, well, passed a bunch of books down to my family and I kind of pinched this one. It's really, really good about food combining and different... Um, kind of naturopath health ideas. Total Immersion Swimming. I've been swimming a lot and I really enjoy that. Um, this book is about how to swim better. I've never been a good swimmer. I'm pretty thin. I just sink. So this book is helping me become, just have better technique. Salt. A History on Salt. A World History on Salt by Mark Kalansky. Yeah. This book is about um, how salt, something that we think of as, you know, just in the ocean and on the table, how it's influenced history so much. We found gunpowder because we were trying to get salt. It's, it's quite interesting. Anthony Bourdain loves this book on the cover. Anyway. So the rest of the 60 books I listen to as audio books. So I'm going to go down the, the list here and find them for you. Okay. Sam Zell, Am I Being Too Subtle? This is a really good book. Sam Zell is a real estate developer and a kind of brash uh, guy with a voice that sounds just like his personality. He's got this kind of harsh, deep, abrasive voice. And uh, he's a, I, I, I really like him. Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Quadrant. Robert Kiyosaki wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this book here. 
And uh, the Cash Flow Quadrant is probably my favorite book of his. It's kind of are you a business owner, are you a freelancer, are you a investor? And how everybody fits in those different groups but don't really consciously realize what they are. Trump, Art of the Deal, I read that as an audio book. Um, no comment politically, but it was an interesting book. David Clark, The Tao of Charlie Munger. That was a really good book. It's like a four hour audio book about Charlie Munger and how it relates to Taoism. David Clark, The House That Jack Ma Built. Jack Ma built Alibaba, and, uh, which is a, like the Amazon of China. And this is an interesting biography on him. Edward Connor, The Upside of Inequality. Basically, it's a, uh, a book talking about how capitalism has really helped the world in so many ways. Ron Chero, Titan, The Life of John D. Rockefeller. Biography on Rockefeller, talking about capitalism. Stephen Witt, How the Music Got Free. This is a really good book about how the MP3 was created and how the kind of piracy Napster era started. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. That's a kind of a classic that a lot of people read back in the day. Presidents have read it and different folks. What else we got? Well, I think that's it. I hope this video has been interesting to you. I hope it'll be interesting to see how many people um, kind of tune in with YouTube analytics. I can see what the average watch time is, whether these kind of long form videos are going to be interesting to some people, or whether you just want to hear me break the guitar, play the guitar. So anyway, comment on any books that that you really love this year. If you if you read a bunch of books like me, you want to list them, I'd love to read. I, I do read the comments and I'll chime in and we can all see, we can vote up if you have some good ideas. So anyway, thanks for watching this video and um, in a couple of days I'm heading back to Australia, which is kind of my year end ritual. So it's been a great year, I've read a lot, learned a lot, and I'm gonna read a bunch more next year. So, over and out.